welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Elena Casas. Our focus today is on the U.S. utilities sector, and our guest is David Sequeira, the chief U.S. market strategist at Morningstar. Long the market laggards, utility stocks are back in fashion. The S&P 500 Utilities Index is up 7% so far this year. Only energy has performed better amid a wider market sell-off, sparked by concerns about inflation, the war in Ukraine and rising interest rates. The general argument for holding these companies is better safe than sorry. They have stable regulated incomes, pay dividends currently around 2.8% for the sector, and are considered safe bets in times of economic turmoil. Some are also at the forefront of the transition to green energy. The counter-argument, though, is that rising interest rates will make these stocks less attractive than holding treasuries, and therefore investors should avoid them. So, should investors consider buying into this sector? Let's ask Morningstar's David Sequeira. David, hi. I know you think the sector is broadly overvalued. So, why is that? Hi, Elena. You're exactly correct. In fact, we actually think the utility sector is the most overvalued under our coverage today, as it's trading at about a 14% premium over a composite of our fair values. In fact, when I look at the sector right now, 80% of those stocks that we cover in utilities are rated either one or two stars, which is essentially equivalent to a, uh, a, a sell or a strong sell you know, in our nomenclature. So I think what we've seen over the past month is really a flight to safety trade as the rest of the market has declined. And right now, looking at multiples, they're about 21 times forward earnings, which is pretty high for a utility sector. The other thing I would look at is that the spread between dividend yields and interest rates has also collapsed as the 10-year has risen. So historically, there's been an average spread of about 150 basis points between those dividend yields and the 10-year. So at this point, I do think that you know, investors just generally aren't taking into account the potential magnitude of the risk from rising interest rates, and particularly if inflation continues to keep rising. What is the impact of inflation here? I know that regulators limit the ability of utility mm -hmm. companies in the US to pass energy price rises onto their customers, but inflation is infecting every sector at the moment, isn't it? So isn't this still a strong defensive play? Well, when we look at the sector, we actually think utilities are some of the most negatively impacted if inflation ends up being more persistent than what the Fed or our own you know, thoughts are. And when we look at returns in the sector over the past 30 years, what we've noted is that you know, when inflation has risen above 3% and stayed there, you know, we've seen negative you know, two-year forward returns. So when I think about the utility sector, you, know, you have to recognize utilities don't have you know, any pricing power. In fact, they can only raise rates as much as and when the regulators determine that they can raise those rates. And oftentimes, you know, the regulators are going to want to try and shield consumers, you know, from some of the rising energy costs. So when I think about the utilities, you know, they have a relatively fixed revenue stream, but a variable cost base. And when I look at their cost base, you know, the infrastructure is very capital intensive. And in fact, you know, the labor cost is also very intensive. So sometimes it takes, you know, months to years to be able to fully recapture all of those costs. There must be some good companies in this space, though. What about those who are at the forefront of moving into renewable energy? Is that going to pay off? You know, we do think it will, although we would note that most of the stocks that we recommend today are those that we think are trading, you know, at fair value. And generally what we're looking for are those companies that have, you know, constructive relationships with their regulators, you know, regulators that allow them to quickly pass through their higher costs, you know, those utilities that have the best avenues for clean energy growth, and the ones that already pay a relatively high dividend rate. So two that I would look at today would be Edison International that we rate three stars, trades at only a very slight premium to our fair value, and it currently pays about a 4% dividend yield. And we think it has some of the best leverage to clean energy growth. The other one would be NYSource, again, another three-star rated stock, trading at a slight premium to our fair value. Company pays about a 3% dividend yield, so a little bit higher than the rest of the sector. And we think it's also well positioned for the transition from you know, coal energy into clean energy. Which companies in this space are you really advising investors to avoid then? Well, we would steer clear of those utility stocks that do have these, you know, large capital investment requirements that would take a while, you know, in order to be able to recapture, you know, higher costs there. 
you know, the ones that have weaker regulatory environments and already have uh, high valuations. So of the stocks there, you know, two that I would steer clear of would be Excel Energy. You know, it's trading at over a 30% premium to our fair value. You know, the dividend yield there is only 2.6%. And we think it has a poor combination of both high inflation risk and regulatory risk. You know, the other one I'd shy away from is Eversource Energy. Again, a one-star stock trading at a 30% premium over our fair value. Dividend yield there is only 2.7%. It's a little bit of the same story as Excel in that it does have a poor combination of regulatory and inflation risks. Thanks so much for that, David Sequeira, Chief U.S. Market Strategist at Morningstar. Well, before I go, here are some of the stories we're following in the utility space. Next Era Energy reported a first quarter loss from a year ago as the world's largest renewable energy company took losses of $1.77 billion on some of its hedges as natural gas prices shot up during the quarter due to the war in Ukraine. Next Era posted a net loss of $451 million. Its shares fell on the news and are down about 14% this year. Three of India's most industrialised states plan to import 10.5 million tonnes of coal in the coming months as officials scramble to arrest widespread power cuts. The scale of the purchases and the decision to go back on a plan to cut coal imports underscore the severity of India's fuel crisis. Utilities' coal inventories are at their lowest level in nine years, while electricity demand is rising at its fastest pace in at least 38 years. And finally, a solar mini-grid is brightening the prospects of villagers in rural Malawi. More than 80% of Malawi's population does not have access to electricity, so the Sitalo mini-grid has made a big difference to people's lives. More than 700 people are connected across three villages, and local farmers no longer have to trek long distances to get their maize milled or sunflower seeds pressed. Development experts say village-level solar power is a more promising way of of bringing electricity to Africa's remotest areas than conventional grids, which often do not reach them. And that's your roundup of the utilities sector. I'm Elena Casas, and this is Reuters.